All right, blue baby. Um, frick you! I was gonna give the middle finger to the camera, but um, let's do some. Let's do some greedier, man. Let's do some greedier. We got a. We got half an hour here. We could do some greedier. Tainted Maggie, greedier. Yeah, yeah. Why not, man? Why not? I'm telling you, man, if, if a sandwich place wanted to compete with Subway, um, well, first off, they're probably already um, going to be doing great by virtue of the fact that I bet they're not going <laughs> to have sandwiches that taste bad. Uh, but secondarily, I think um, they they should start doing the you gouge again, man, because I'm telling you, the you gouge was one. If you talk to anybody my age or older that has the experience of going to, I'm gonna bring it up during siege man I'm gonna be like do you remember the way a subway used to cut the bread mouth's gonna be like oh yeah and sips is gonna be like right I got some other questions for sips wait somebody said please bring this up to sips later what what was I talking about when they said please bring this up to sips because I was like I agree I think that'll be a, a great thing to bring up not John Madden The, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The bald, the whether or not you can't hear people on a windy day if you're bald. That's. I also wanted to to ask Sips because I know he has a turtle that is is at the vet right now. I wanted to ask him if his vet has ever remarked upon whether they find it, like how does the veterinarian feel when somebody comes in with a turtle? Are they like? Like, this is going to be maybe an easier appointment than usual because, like, when you have a cat and you got to, like, do something with a cat, the cat's f flipping out, right? They're going crazy. But I feel like, you know, if you have to, like, do an exam on a turtle, what's it going to do, right? Like, it's not going to run away. It could bite you? Yeah, no, but like, he had like a, like a, a blocked butthole or something, right? Like, I mean, if you're examining the turtles behind, it's not gonna bite you, it's not a giraffe. Aquarius is good now, that's right, that's right. I'm just, I bet if you're a vet, you have like... You play favorites. Any, any veterinarians in chat? Don't answer that, I know the answer to that question is no. You, if you're a vet, you got options. You don't have to be here. Unlike some of us. I'm a vet nurse. What? Well, okay. Do you, I want to know the honest opinion? Do you do you play favorites? Like I'll be honest. Like I, I mean, I'm sure you love animals if you if you choose to work as a vet. You gotta, right? Because there's some terrible parts of the job. I'm sure there's an exception or two, but I'm also like, there's sometimes, like, you if you go to the vet, you'll see a dog there that's like a really cute dog. And you, sometimes you'll see like an ugly dog. And I'm sure the vet's like, oh, look at this cutie. And you're like, come on, lady, we both got eyes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway wrong i don't think so though i i don't think so okay hold on i'm gonna i'm gonna fight you for real here mm -mm. yeah or like you know like i've we we take our cats to get groomed sometimes uh not to like get them like you know up, dolled up like they got hedges or something but we, so that they shed less and I'm like I'm sure the groomer loves Tomo because literally he's just like he's malleable he does whatever right you he's like oh whatever if you're gonna kill me just kill me um Ruka on the other hand he rages against the coming of the night right so every time we pick them up the groomer is always like Oh, Tomo was great, and Ruka, like, we did what we could. And I'm like, I bet they're, like, they get annoyed when this cat comes in. I'm, I guarantee it. And I, you can't blame them, right? Like, you had the choice to have, like, a... Well, not the choice, but you got the opportunity to have, like, a, an easy work day or an annoying work...
That hurt. I should have bought something instead of instead of winging it, but it is what it is. Euclidorus. I hope that's how your name is pronounced. Thank you for the, the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Would this be an annoying workday? Uh, straight up, I know the joke kind of makes itself, but definitely not. Because um, we, had, we had two very great runs as characters that I'm not an enormous... Well, actually, I love the Tainted Forgotten, but not that into Tainted Eve, and we had a great run with Tainted Eve regardless, so I'm, I'm a happy man there. Maybe I'll come around, by the way. I had some runs lately where I was like, now I respect Tainted Apollyon. And now I, I respect Tainted Jacob. He gets the respect he deserves, but... He, he respects the creativity that serves as the foundation of silence. Go ahead, hit me. Just makes me more powerful, eventually. But I bet, like, if you're a vet and somebody brings in, like, you know... A turtle? You're like... This is sick. Relatively speaking, this examination is going to be unannoying. And then I'm sure if somebody's like, hey, can you take a look at my tarantula? They're like, I guess I gotta. You know, if not me, then who? What if the turtle goes into his shell? As long as the problem's not with his head, I think you're doing all right, right? But Austin, it is sick. <laughs> it is rather nutty. It's Austin, extremely Austin Powers voice. I'm not saying they wouldn't do it, by the way. I'm just, you know, it is their job. I'm just saying, like, you play favorites too, don't. Oh, no, I'm an insurance agent. I love all of my clients equally. No, you don't, you liar. Just t tell the truth. Some of your clients are easy to deal with. Some of your clients are buttholes. Like, it's that welcome to planet Earth. Okay. We still got the devil. Let's let's rock that for, for the rest of this. How did I dodge that shot? That was the most impressive dodge I've ever done, and it was completely by accident. I don't even think anybody noticed. Do you play favorites between your cats? It depends on the like what you mean by play favorites. You know? I mean, the answer is, like, yes in some ways. If I have to, like... You know, if Kate's like, oh... One of the cats has, like, poop on his leg. In my head, I'm going, like, I hope it's Tomo. Because when you pick up Tomo, it's like, he's just like, go ahead, clean me. When you pick up Ruka, he spreads his arms and legs and, like, tries to claw his way out of the sink like we're going to drown him or something like that. Okay, now that's a good item. That's a good item. Tears up, please. Ah, oh, Blood of the Marty's pretty good, too. Oh, Stapler, man. Stapler, baby. Yeah. Holy card. No, that's pretty bad right now. Okay, okay. I'm, out. I'm out of here. Forget the curse room. Why don't you let him lick himself clean? Because he, he gets poop on his, like, leg, and then he goes and sits on the dining room table and just, like, stretches out and smears it all over the table, man. I don't have a favorite cat on, like, a spiritual level. But, like, if you're like, hey, you know, the cat has, like, you know, something that you, you got to handle, like, a cat mess. I'm like, man, I, you know, I play favorites in that capacity. I, in my brain, I'm like, I hope it's cat X instead of cat Y. If they were like, hey, you can only send one cat to college, I would have to, that would be a much more difficult decision, okay? But that's not what we're talking about here. But it would probably be Ruka, because I don't think Tomo's cut out for <laughs> post-secondary education. Maybe Clown College? Hey, Tomo, he's a cutie. Ruka is, like, noble, and Tomo is, like, he's majestic. Tomo is a cute cat. No question. Ruka is, like, um... Ruka's strong. It's, like... It's scary sometimes.
<laughs> Rook is a Chad, exactly. High charisma too, yeah. I don't know, Tomo has like a... He's uh, got a high beauty stat. And a high luck stat. Don't don't kill me. Like dude, come on. Can you just like slow down? Saved. Saved. Anyway, yeah, it's my cans. <laughs> And Al, have you seen the TikTok trend where people throw American cheese slices at their baby to get it to stop crying? Uh, so I've not seen that. Uh, that is pretty funny, though. I've never done it, and I don't think I would either. But I will say, I know that, like, here's the only thing I'm going to say about this, okay? Is that I feel like anybody saying that that's child abuse probably does not have a baby if anything if the cheese slice actually gets them to stop crying then it would be child abuse to not throw the cheese slice at them you're gonna let them suffer for hours and hours when when a single slice of cheese could solve their problems this man is a genius <laughs> yeah, you just got to be careful because they might be like, hey, they're going to start crying when they want cheese. And then you're going to, your cheese budget's going to go through the roof, man. Definitely not something you do for your first kid. That's, I, I hear that. So the baby's been teething, uh, like a lot. So she doesn't go to, and like the teething is also combined with uh, separation anxiety. So she, uh, we put her to bed. Her teeth start to hurt. She gets very upset by that. And then I, I, my hunch is that she comes to the realization. She's like, mommy and daddy aren't here. What the heck's going on? Like, I'm alone in this world. And then she just starts wailing, right? Like, she goes freaking nuclear. Um, so we've been dealing with that. And you know, I, I think when it's your first kid... We're out here like, we, we were making like, we got this device that can make breast milk popsicles. I'm not joking. They're not big, you know, they're like little baby sized popsicles, but it's so that the baby can uh, eat something cold that kind of like freezes the, the pain a little bit. You know, like you might, if you have a sore throat, you might drink like a cold beverage or something like that. We're doing that and like we, you know, we got all sorts of like anti-teething technology. If we have a second kid. 16 slices of American cheese going <laughs> straight into the <laughs> straight into the refrigerator. Certainly sounds a lot easier. Just throw a slice of cheese at the problem. Does it work? Like I don't I don't know. I don't know <laughs> any of this. I've I've never seen it, but slice of cheese and I'll be all right. Slice of cheese. I'm sorry, what? Dude, I'm telling people are like, breast milk popsicle, that's weird. It's not like... I mean, I guess it is weird, like, if you don't have a kid. It's not that weird if you have a kid. It would be pretty weird if your kid was like 15. They were like, I had a bad day of school, and you're like, pop this in your... In your cornhole. <laughs> When your babies, like, that's what babies eat, dude. What do you think they eat? Hot chip? Bro, can I have a good deal, please? Cheese. Oh, of course, cheese. Pretty weird if you're eating it. Yeah, that's one of the questions that I get asked where I realize I'm not weird. Everybody else is actually just weird. People will be like, you tried it, right? And I'm like, no. I don't even like, well, I don't know if this is even, 
coherent. But I was, I don't even like cow milk. I don't think the human milk is the logical step, but I guess, you know, human milk is probably the first one you, you, you take. I would like technology, please. I don't even know how this, bro, excuse me. It grabbed it. Let's go! I'm out. We out this. All right, that, the synergy doesn't seem that good, but it is cool, which is important. Costing five is pretty intense, though. Anyway, I like I, I have not tried it. Um, this is actually amazing. I probably also would not. I mean, if I was gonna try it, I would have tried it by now. By the way, I, I do need to own up to the fact that I I made fun of um, the Love Guru for a joke in which Vern Troyer uh, is hit by a hockey stick, flies across the, in, the entire length of the ice, ends up in the goal, and then the goal light goes off and the scoreboard ticks up by one. Not a good joke, but he, where's the apology coming from? When I was watching Jingle All The Way, they actually do the exact same bit. Like, note for note. Except instead of a hockey stick, it's just a very strong, large man punches a, a smaller man through the air like, he, he doesn't even have any bullet drop. Like, he just flies, like, straight as an arrow through the air. And then, like, hits his head on a on a little... Uh, yeah, the fake Santas. He hits his head on, like, the, the exhaust valve or something. And it goes, like, ding! So, like, I gotta... I gotta own up to the fact that... That is not... Or I, I should say, the love guru did not originate that terrible joke. Same thing happens in a James Bond movie? Oh no. Really? Gets a plus two for being a callback. Oh, thank you. I thought you meant the, the joke like from the movie and I was like, it's not a callback. It's not a callback. Who said you could eat my cookie? Put that cookie down! I know I've talked about it already, but it is like... The most insulting thing in that movie is that Arnold Schwarzenegger's wife doesn't recognize him in the Turbo Man costume. Despite Arnold Schwarzenegger being like 6'4", 240, 10% body fat, Seven-time ex Mr. Olympia and the only person in the whole movie with uh, an Austrian accent like is you're like come on I, I can Suspend some of my disbelief in this movie The, the uh, I shouldn't have bought that the fact that his wife doesn't go like I knew you were turbo man all along the fact that she's like Howard Come on Although I will say dude you gotta look at, uh, if you haven't seen Jingle All The Way in a long time, you gotta see the CGI from when he turns the Turbo Man jetpack on. It looks so good. And not at all bad. Like, he, he turns it on, he flies like 10,000 feet into the air. And he goes, <laughs> I was laughing too, like he, he so he picks up his kid, right? In the when he's got the Turbo Man jetpack on, and he just like starts flying him around like like for fun. And I'm like, dude, you're like you're climbing up to like the cruising altitude of a of an airplane. Like you're not capable of Honestly, it's just garbage, man. You're not capable of handling this. Like you don't know what you're talking about. You can't be- and the boosters are like burning his legs and stuff like that. 
I'm like, your kid's gonna end up freaking sous vide by the time... Yeah, he didn't even address the icing problem, exactly. Donkey, 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 donkey. Okay, you know what? I got yum heart, so we're gonna do this. Anyway, long story short, jingle all the way. Some, some good, some bad. Oh, baby. Yeah, this run's kind of doo doo, huh? Like, I'm, I'm hoping we're gonna get like that homing synergy that's gonna bring it all together. But also, why would the suit need a real jetpack? Man, is I mean, there's a lot of stuff in that movie that I'm inclined to believe doesn't stand up to the bounds of realism. Like Sinbad almost murders a child, like in cold blood. Actually, you know what's crazy in that movie? I forgot to even bring it up. Sinbad uh, gives a cop a bomb. And then the cop explodes, but he's just like, it just makes his face kind of like burnt. And then he falls over and his hair gets messed up. And like two minutes later, he's fine. It's kind of funny though. Sinbad goes, it's a real bomb? Man, that's a sick world we're living in! Anyway. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little Looney Tunes, but... It's good nonetheless. I had a good time watching the movie. Phil Hartman is a he's a treat, man. Certainly better than Coneheads. Also has Phil Hartman in it. I mean, can you believe that in Coneheads, like they make him narfle the Garthok because he got his teeth capped? Honestly, it just Boy, I sure ding. Oh, I see. So, um, him going to an alien planet isn't actually uh, treasonous, but him getting his dental work done means he has to narfle the Garthok. Ding. Full, full suite of bad deals with the devil. You love to see it. What is your brain, my dude? Corey, have you not seen? I'm talking about cone heads, dude. He has to narfle the Garthok. It's amazing you can quote it. No, it's because I watched it yesterday. <laughs> I watched it yesterday. It's on Amazon Prime Video. It's 87 minutes long. If you find yourself with a spare 87 minutes, uh, highly recommend it. Dude, those cards could actually be worth a ton for us. I'm not even sweating that. George Lucas stole the ending of Coneheads for the end of Star Wars Episode 2. No, it's more like, well, there's similarities, I suppose. It's much more of like, Conehead is clearly inspired by the Rancor scene in Jabba's palace from Return of the Jedi. Um, you also can't forget that Dan Aykroyd defeats the, uh, the Garthok by golfing. Which is just a, a, an inspired way to destroy a baddie, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, if you have a photosensitivity, this is probably the run where you would most like to look away. I <laughs> Occasionally it starts running at like... A third of a frame per second as well. You think Coneheads is the reason Dan Aykroyd's a ufologist? Dude, I don't know, but it really puts... It makes you think, right? Like... There must have been conversations he had, like, with Michael McKean when they were making the movie. 
And he's like, this Conehead stuff is like, it's a little silly, but you know this is all real, right? Like the Garthok is like a real thing. Their child was named Connie. This ch their child was named Connie Conehead. Yes, that's correct. You're not wrong. I want booster pack. It's, it's a rare choice. Boo! Okay, strength cherry. Oh yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, sure. Um. Okay. Um. Pop. 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 Does temperance even work? How does this work, dude? Tears up, baby. Uh, lots, lots of pills is what it does. Health down. Okay, cool. Puberty. All right. Can of corn and all that. Uh, three cents for this. Sure. We're, I mean, we're gonna lose a lot of HP here, man. This is gonna be. Hold on. Seven cent item. Oh, it's alabaster box. So why am I taking this? I don't know. Okay, I don't have an answer for you. But if it works, oh, <laughs> if it works though, are you okay? I'm gonna be honest. I have to go to the bathroom like pretty badly. But the run's almost over, and then we're playing siege. NL, should I watch Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy or Inglorious Bastards? Great question. Thanks for coming to me with the with the question. I always told you 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 could come to me and your mother with all this stuff. You don't have to keep it inside. Inglorious Bastards is a better movie than Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You should read the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy book. And watch the movie Inglorious Bastards. Reading is so stupid, Lamau. Look, I agree with you, but this is the one exception, okay? Just get the audiobook, dude. Dude, I got a new Audible credit. What am I going to do with it? I don't know. I've already... I've gotten every book on behavioral economics that exists. Trying to fall asleep. Freaking Nassim Taleb's trying to talk to me on Monte Carlo simulations. And I'm like, bro, what the hell are you talking about? I'm trying to fall asleep. But Papa, I cannot read. <laughs> All right, well, then get the audiobook. Dad didn't take a nap. And fires the missiles. That one's for you, Apollo. I know it's, that's an Apollo classic right there. Moneyball audiobook. Dude, it's fricked up that Billy Beans never won the World Series, right? Like, they should just give him one. Like, he's... He's clearly... He wants it. He's working hard. What do you mean he's not a very good manager? Did you not see him put Scott Hatterberg in the lineup? Even though Philip Seymour Hoffman said, This guy freaking stinks and he doesn't know how to play first base. And then Scott Hatterberg comes out and helps them... Uh, he, he hits a walk-off home run that allows them to get the longest winning streak in baseball history. You're going to tell me Billy Bean is a bad manager when he had that stroke of genius? I kind of wanted some more HP than that, but you know what? That's fine. Dude, you guys are going to feel so silly when Alabaster Box pops. Right now, I know it's like ye of little faith, but like, ooh. When it pops, man. What was the last bad movie Brad Pitt was in? He's definitely been in some. During the Jennifer Aniston arc. Ah, good, right answer. Okay, World War Z. World, but even World War Z, like, it's not good. It's not a complete disaster. Also, great moment in the movie where he says, Can of Coke, can of Coke, and I'll be alright. Remember that? 
Oh, that's true. Ad Astra wasn't particularly good. That was only like two years ago. It's not a complete disaster. Do you ever summon enemies, by the way? War Machine? I've never heard of it. Except, boom, you looking for this? This fight's gonna take a while, but you know what? Can of corn. If you see, if you see HP, you gotta snag it, dude. Okay, it's not gonna take that long because we're just actually gonna die. Great shot. One in a million shot. Don't even know what's hitting me at this point. Sure. Cool. Alright. Fine. Hey, jerk. Why don't you summon some enemies? You jerk. Hearts? Hearts? Hearts on fire? Guess I'll just get hit by things that... Oh, sorry. Sorry, my mistake. There's shadows? There's shadows? There's shadows. It's my mistake. There's shadows on the screen. Alabaster box, you really let me down. I almost typed slash raid. Slash marker greed is good, JK. Uh, 